All right, this is a quick overview of how I built the 3D uh, printer enclosure for the Prusa Mark 3S. Uh, it's got a temperature controlled fan which uh, off gasses the fumes out the window. So it's just uh, just built with a couple of with well three IKEA lac tables, all just stacked up on top of each other, and you, um, you print out some parts to connect it all together, basically. And I've also added in a IR remote control, which uh, just powers everything on, including the uh, the printer. So the, the printer, external temperature sent, uh, display, uh, the Raspberry Pi, and uh, some an, an LED light strip that I've got inside the uh, enclosure. This is what the top brackets look like. They um, screw in using the, uh, the one of the screws that comes with the IKEA LAC table. Um, this is the bottom bracket connector. It's it's not actually connected together, so you can lift up each one of the tables to just separate them and you know move them around really easily. It's very very quick to, to disassemble and, uh, and and move somewhere else. And yeah, the this is the um, uh, the spool holder. It's pretty cool uh, the way that it works. Um, it works really well. You just need to make sure that the spool holder is very close to the intake on the table, and that that intake is directly above the uh, the the Prusa printer intake. Uh, if you don't have it close enough, then I'd imagine the um, you could pull the, sp the spool off of the uh, the rollers, so uh, that's, that's really important. Um, yeah, then there's the mount, uh, which has got a CPU fan underneath it, which is from an old CPU I had kicking about. Um, that's connected to a um, variable voltage power supply that I've I've got, uh, which I can just manually change with. Uh, uh, from 6 volts to 9 volts to 12 volts, I, I find 9 nine volts pumps out enough air volume. So um, that's what I've got it on for now, but during the summer I might need a, a little bit more more power in there. Um, the pipe is 50mm corrugated, uh, just black, I think, it's, I think it's garden pond pipe. Um, it wasn't exactly 50mm, so I, I measured it when it arrived and then built the, the housing uh, in Blender uh, to connect it into. Um, then there's the uh, exhaust itself, uh, which goes out the window. And I might extend that out a bit so that there's another pipe that that pulls that, go, that goes further out just to get a bit more distance from the window. But I've had it printing for hours and hours and I, I can't smell anything which was definitely not the case beforehand. You know, this this room, you could really smell, uh, smell even with just uh, PLA. It was pretty um, noticeable. Then we've got the uh, the pie uh, enclosure itself. Um, that has got the temperature sensor inside of it and uh, it, it's hooked up to a relay, which then uh, you know, uh, puts through the power to the fan when it's above 25 degrees Celsius, um, and it switches it off when it gets below 25 degrees Celsius. This is so. This means you have quite a lot of control over, um, you know, the temperature. I've, I've had it up to 40 degrees, so you can set it to whatever you want, really. Um, I've, I've run a bunch of different. Uh, code samples in there to control it in different ways um, you know changing the temperature based on the time of the print and, and whatnot um, so it's it's pretty yeah there's there's lots of fine control for it so um, so the way that it works uh, the relay has uh, you, you've got your positive cable which powers the fan uh, so you just cut that cut that in half put the put one half in the top uh, 12 volt positive wire from, from the you know from the power supply, and put the 
uh, other positive wire which goes to the fan just below in, in the terminal just below that then you've got your GPIO 21 pin uh, which is uh, pin 40 I think on the on the Pi um, ground which just goes to the ground on the Pi and VCC which goes to the 5 volts on the Pi to, to power the, the relay switch so when your code runs it uh, it sends the GPIO signal to switch the relay on and allow that connection between the two positive wires to get back to what they were before Then we've got the SI7021 temperature sensor. Um, that one's really straightforward to, to wire up to the Pi. You've just got the uh, voltage in, which goes to 3 volts uh, on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, the 3VO is, is a 300 milliamps, I think it, it is, to, which is an output that you can use for something else. I, I didn't need it yet for anything, but that's what it is. The GND is the ground, so that goes to any ground on your Pi, any, any free ground you've got there. Um, the SCL goes to GPIO3 on the Pi, and the SDA goes to GPIO2 on the Pi. Really simple, really easy. Just as a little bit of extra info, um, this is this is actually the fourth temperature sensor that I've tried, uh, which and this one works great, but. Um, I've also tried a couple of others. So the first one I tried was the TMP36, uh, which is a, like a, a pound or two pounds. It was really cheap. I think it was the cheapest one I could find. <laughs> um, it just didn't work. Uh, I had really inaccurate readings. I don't know if that was because I soldered. I spent too much too much time with the solder on it and overheated it and broke it. I, I, I don't know, but it just didn't didn't. It wasn't very accurate. Then I got a DHT22 um, and I also got an AM2302, I think it's called. Um, both of these just, they worked, but they they just pulled back some really random errors, uh, but buffer errors. Um, one minute it will give you a perfect ten uh, temperature sense, sense reading and then the next minute you get an error. Um, so I got a, a, like probably got two successful readings a minute when I when I ran it every 10 seconds uh, which just wasn't good enough for me I needed something that was really much more reliable um, reading up about it apparently 30% it has a th these things have a 30% failure rate so I think it's kind of expected with, with these particular ones but um yeah the SI 7021 7021 that one worked really well and I, I, I had a couple of errors when I was first installing it but I've, I've been using it for two weeks now and it's just perfect no problems at all no errors works every time so um, yeah I definitely recommend that one um, yeah as, as for the code you need to import uh, time board Buzio out of fruit and the GPIO zero libraries um, and you need to do the install command, the pip3 install, to um, get things running. Uh, instructions will be down below if you, for more detailed information. I think this is all the setup you needed to do, but there might have been a few other steps I missed. But go check the, the, the links. So the code is just it's just simple Python. Um, I've I've actually modified it a little bit since then, since since this one. But um, this will get you started. Um, and it works works as far works well as far as I can see anyway. So while true, um, sleep for five seconds and then check the temperature. Uh, if the temperatures are o over twenty five degrees, fan equals LED twenty one is the GPIO zero setting to put the fan on. Otherwise, uh, fan dot close just closes that LED LED effectively, which is what the the library uses for. Um, for the GPIO pins. Uh, any exceptions get called in the accept uh, and just continues on unless it's a serious exception. So, um, but yeah, I've not, as I said, I've not had any problems with it. If I do, I'll, I'll update the code and, and uh, post the link on GitHub. Um, but yeah, that works pretty well. Uh, a couple of other things before I forget. Uh, the 
there's an L bracket which uh, you need to print off um, so that you can remove the power supply from the Pi and pu put the power supply out the back. So the L bracket um, just keeps the you know the, the platform sturdy and, and um, make sure that your prints don't get affected by removing the power supply, which acts as a support. But you need you need to remove the power supply because they, you know you don't want those to get hot um, in the enclosure. It's not good for them. Um, yeah, so the you just unscrew the power supply and the cable is just about long enough to run through the um, the the corner um, bracket, which has got a little groove cut out of it already which you, which you can see here um, and then you mount that using the PSU mount like that you can get in the links below um, it, I, it didn't f the, the one on the link below did not definitely did not fit the PSU that I had so definitely double check that uh, and just you know uh, lengthen it a bit in, in Blender or whatever 3D software, software you use um, and it also didn't mount perfectly. I needed to I, I needed to build some custom prints to to get that to work pro uh, properly, basically. So yeah, um, uh, other things to keep in mind. Uh, it's obviously you know, three D printer is a uh, fire safety hazard. So I've got a uh, smoke detector, and I've also got a powdered uh, fire, fire um, suppressant, um, fire extinguisher, and I've even got a fire blanket as well, just to, just, you know, why not? <laughs> but, you know, can't be too, uh, can't be too safe, can you? So it's good to be careful. Um, that's it. All right. I hope someone finds it useful. Uh, if you do, let me know. Um, yeah, cheers.